Kirsanov's theorem is actually a pretty simple statement. It basically says that if you have a Brownian motion with some drift, then that entire process is a Brownian motion under some different probability measure. You're probably here because you have no idea what that statement meant. And like we always do, let's break it down into something simpler that we can understand. Let's start off with a six-sided die. A probability measure basically assigns different outcomes to different numbers, those numbers being between 0 and 1 and adding up to 1. Those numbers don't actually have to represent likelihood. We can have another probability measure that assigns outcomes to different numbers with the exact same properties. Here, we define two probability measures to be equivalent if the probability of one outcome is zero under one probability measure to be zero under the other probability measure as well. As an example, P and Q are currently equivalent. If we change one of the numbers to zero, they are no longer equivalent. Changing one of the numbers under P, however, makes them equivalent again. Let's write this in a different format. If P and Q are in fact equivalent, there is a function, in fact a random variable which we will call Z, that maps the probabilities of P to the probabilities of Q. Hence, if we let one of the probabilities become zero, we can't find a Z that maps the probability of Q back to P. Now that we have a basic understanding of equivalent probability measures, let's apply that to Brownian motion. I made an entire video describing Brownian motions, let's forget all of that. Let's say that a Brownian motion is some sort of random process that has a high probability of looking kind of straight and having a low probability of going up a single direction. In fact, let's rewrite this really quick. We're going to say that a process is a Brownian motion under P if the probability of looking flat is high and the probability of going up one direction is low. Let's rewrite this as a pretty simple stochastic differential equation. Now what happens if we add a drift? Now, the probability of looking flat is pretty low, and the probability of going up is pretty high. Notice that this is all under the probability measure P. Does there exist another probability measure, such that the probability of looking flat is pretty high, and the probability of going up is pretty low? The properties of a Brownian motion. In particular, does there exist some random variable z that maps the probabilities of p to the probabilities of q? Gersonov says that there is, so we can in fact treat this process as a Brownian motion under a different probability measure. And this doesn't just work for dt, it works for all sort of functions with different drifts. And that is a general overview of Gersonov's theorem. I skipped over a lot of specifics, such as the probability of a single process being zero, the random variable z actually having a name called the random nicodyme derivative, as well as having certain conditions on the drift. But the goal of this video is just to give a general idea, so now that you read the textbook, you actually know what is going on.